Well, it's not as if there's nothing to talk about when you're talking state system of higher education. It's not like there hasn't been any news. Dave Pigeon is the new spokesman for the state system. Our first chance to talk with him since he took over the job. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to have you with us this morning. So, Yeah, the- what, a, what a great way to start the week. Uh, so I want to say thank you for the chance to speak with you and the, the community there in Indiana. A lot of exciting things are happening. So, uh, like I said, this is a great way to start Monday and the the whole week. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about you getting the job and uh, taking over what uh, uh, Ken Marshall has set a pretty high standard for. Yes, he really has. (laughs) He he certainly set a very high bar. He left a legacy that uh, certainly lives on in the the hearts of the folks here who work at the state system. Um, And I certainly want to thank Ken for everything that he's done for the state system um, and the role that he filled. Um, but it's also uh, great to be here because I've had, I'm at that point in the career, Todd, where I can look back and see all the twists and turns and say, what a ride, what's next? <laughs> Just go ahead and uh, fill those shoes, will you, Dave? No problem. <laughs> no, yeah, problem. no problem. No so, problem at all. Uh, when you look back at my career, it can be summarized by newspapers and railroads. Um, so I spent the first part of my career working in the news, uh, specifically as a newspaper reporter. The bulk of my career was spent covering politics in Pennsylvania at a very interesting time mm-hmm. there during the early 2000s to about 2009, which also included, of course, when in 2008 Pennsylvania was such a focal point for the nation in terms of presidential politics, not just state politics. Mm -hmm. But uh, in 2009, as many newspaper reporters like myself experienced, the economy was uh, falling and the news industry in particular was cratering. I uh, lost my position uh, due to downsizing in the particular newsroom where I worked in Lancaster. And I went to work for TV for a short time and while I was at that TV station, the person who I would succeed as spokesperson for Norfolk Southern Railroad, uh, Norfolk Southern Corporation, called me and said, hey, my job is open. You should apply. Oh, yeah. And it's an interesting story I should share with you sometime. But lo and behold, I took the position as spokesperson for Norfolk Southern, which fulfilled a family legacy five generations before me had uh, worked for American Railroad. So oh. it was my turn. Yeah, it was your turn. And now you find yourself at the state system of higher education, and you talk about crucial times. This is one of them for the state system, isn't it? Yes, it really is. And I find it energizing because what you have across the system, and at every campus that I visit, less staring in the mirror and asking ourselves, why us? Why are we facing the challenging times that we are? And more forward-looking, more asking the hard questions about how is this system not only going to exist for the next five years, but thrive for the next century. And as the new person joining this team, joining this family, that is an incredible place to walk into and be a part of. Yeah, the chancellor um, is certainly a bundle of energy, Dan Greenstein, and he's somebody to live up to, by goodness, uh, just to keep up with him on his bicycle. Uh, But one of the things that uh, he has talked about recently is the fact that with the state system redesign and with all of the discussions over the past year and and maybe even two to three years, uh, there certainly is the recognition of the need to change the way the state system operates. It doesn't sound like he's quite sure there's the will uh, among some of the state system schools. Actually, I think what we're finding is that the message is resonating across the campuses, that now is the time to be making right choices. And in order to make those right choices, we have to be diligent. We also have to be patient um, and ask ourselves in this marketplace. And let's take a step back and look broadly at higher education. Mm -hmm. Higher education across the country are facing challenges in terms of enrollment, There are questions about the value. So the marketplace is telling us something, and it's being felt even more acutely here in Pennsylvania. I'm sure we all know the story about declining high school graduation rates and population shifts. So we have to ask ourselves, again, not staring in the mirror and saying, why us, but taking a critical look at how the system operates 
and find solutions that will make it competitive, adaptable, and give us momentum going forward. Todd, I think it is encouraging when you think about these universities have been around for a considerable amount of time. In many cases, 150 years, sometimes even longer. There's a reason why they are here today, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have adapted and have had to find ways forward before, and now we get to do it again. So that way we can be here for the next decade and the next century beyond. One of the great things I think uh, Chancellor Greenstein has said in the past year or so uh, since he first assumed the mantle, which was almost exactly a year ago, is that uh, this has always been, the state system schools have always been the greatest, most affordable bang for your buck in terms of education, uh, not only in, with what they provide to their students, but what they provide to their communities, the communities in which they exist. Uh, they are such a vital link uh, for families uh, that have uh, lower to middle income and for the towns in which they are. Uh, it's, it's really something that ha- is not only worth preserving, but it's essential that they be preserved, yes? Yes, that's absolutely right. So I think we can take a look at it both at the community level and at the state level. At the community level, in many places like Indiana, these campuses are either one of, if not the largest employer within a community. And it is pumping so many economic dollars and providing sustainability to these communities. Uh, One of the numbers that we often like to talk about is when the state invests $1 in the state system, it brings $11 back out in economic uh, benefits. So there's a great story to be told about that. But if you take a step back and look at it from a, an entire state, the top three majors collectively are business, administ- are business STEM, science, uh, tech, engineering, math, and health. That's important because 95% of our graduates find work or they start postgraduate studies within two years. And out of that, 88% find work in their chosen field. What that says to me is that despite the headwinds that we may be facing right now, we are contributing to, if not creating the foundation for a 21st century economy in places like Indiana, in places like Harrisburg and Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, and in communities such as Clarion and Slippery Rock, California, and Indiana. Dave Pigeon is our guest. He's the new spokesman for the state system of higher education. So entering into a, a new academic year at all of our state system schools, of course, including IUP, the tuition level frozen this year for the first time in about 20 years, and uh, looking forward to a new semester and, uh, and implementing some of the changes and, and further refining and defining some of those changes that will be taking place over the course of the next year. What does this year uh, look like from the state system's perspective in relation to all of these schools getting rolling again? Yeah, so we've been talking a lot about system redesign, which is a term for we are popping the hood on the state system and taking a look at the engine and asking ourselves, how is it working? And what parts need to be tinkered with or altered to make this into a fine running machine. We have the opportunity right now to be leaders, not just within the state, but across the country, because as I mentioned before, the challenges that we have right now, they are not necessarily not necessarily unique because they are challenges being faced in other states, but they are felt acutely here. So we are moving from phase one, which for the system redesign meant looking under the hood and doing research and assessing ourselves. Where are we? What has worked? What is not working? And we are moving now into phase two. This is where we begin to design what is being referred to as a shared system. Mm -hmm. We are looking for the opportunities to find efficiencies and to save on costs and improve capabilities in areas like finance and human resources, student administration, Uh, information technology. Now, this is the kind of thing that's going to occupy the time and the minds of people who work in buildings that are marked administration. But it does have an impact on the people who are walking across campus, who are in the classroom, who are living in, in the dormitories, because 
you know, like I mentioned, Todd, when I go to those campuses, I feel a pride and a confidence. They want to compete in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so we want to put wind in those sails and continue to move forward. It does take some time. And by that, I mean, we've gone through phase one. Now we're into phase two. We can't flip a switch and just suddenly have a shared system. We've got a lot of smart minds. Let's use those, design it, and then in the next phase, come up with the impl- implementation plan. Yeah, I think a lot of it, you know, to continue the metaphor, you, you pop open that hood, you take a look, some of the things you can just soup up what's there, and some of them you got to yank the engine and put, it some, put something new in. Uh, but it, right. that's, that's part of the whole excitement of the whole, the whole idea, isn't it? It really is, and the marketplace is telling us something. And we want to be able to respond to that marketplace. And one of those areas I think that can be seen over time will be online learning. Now, we know that demand is there for online learning. But we cannot just simply create an online course, throw it up on a website, and hope that it works. It has to be deliberate. It has to be thought out. How is this going to make sense for everyone if we come up with, an online learning platform for students, um, even non-traditional students, adult students, how do we make that work? And that's the phase that we're in right now. We know that 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 opportunity exists to create an online platform, and now we need to put the right choices in place to make it a sustainable and successful platform. He's Dave Pidgeon. We're out of time this time, Dave, but we got to do this again, okay? Oh, I enjoyed it, Todd. Thank you very much. Uh, Look forward to uh, seeing you and hopefully in person sometime. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Todd. There's Dave Pigeon.